and welcome everyone to another video it is tuesday morning i feel like this video might actually go up yeah it's going up tomorrow so that's a very short lived time on uh, your almost life basically you will see on the clock with there it's already past 12 we kind of like had a little late morning we stayed in bed for a long time read came out here played cuddled had breakfast I just now made my first cup of coffee. I had some kombucha earlier because we made our own kombucha. I need to show you this because it's so amazing. And other than that, today we're just having a classic getting things done kind of day. I already cleaned a lot this morning. And then one thing that I really want to show you today are all the parcels I got during the last couple of days. I got a bunch of gifted things. I ordered some wonderful vintage pieces for my son, which came. Yeah. That's basically it. I feel like it's been such a long time since I just did a classic day in the life kind of vlog. So I figured today would be the perfect day to do so. So grab yourself a drink, get comfortable and spend a day with me. I quickly want to talk about the book that I'm currently reading. I picked this up, must have been a couple of years ago actually, in one of these like free bookcases. And I didn't really think much of it. I just really liked the cover and like the art of it. And then even like this and the little mouth up there. I just thought it was greatly designed. I really liked it. And by the way, this design, I figured it was a 1960s book, which it is. The original name of this book is The Dolly Dolly Spy, if someone knows it. And this is the guy who wrote it. And so I got into it and it's actually quite the good idea. I really like it. Also, I just went and changed my son's diaper and I dipped my hair into like the water thing we have because we don't like to use wet wipes so we're just using, you know, washcloth and now this side might not be curly anymore when it's dried so we'll see anyway, this book is like an anti-hero spy story set in the 1960s it's about a security officer in a big firm who's kind of like pressured or like pulled into doing undercover work which is quite interesting but then I did some research on the author Adam Demay, Dement, however you pronounce it. And that is even wilder than the actual story. See, he was quite young when he wrote this book, 23, 24. In 1967, this book was released and he signed a six book deal. So basically he was supposed to write six books from what I could research because there isn't really much out there about him. He only ever wrote four and then he went to Switzerland, Nepal, all these places did like several different jobs, philosophy, a lot of these kind of things. And then years and years after his fame, which was in the late 60s, a letter was released that was sent to the Bank of England um, that was under the name of F.A. Dement. And uh, his name was Francis Adams. So a lot of people actually think it was him, which kind of like led to this narrative of him maybe being involved with some kind of scheme with some kind of money laundering maybe he was with like drug dealers or something it is just so interesting and then he kind of vanished after he wrote this books in his early 20s there isn't really much out there about him so i think that's insanely interesting other than that it's a great book but as said i'm way more interested in the author's life now so if anyone knows anything about him please let me know i was actually too interested i just did a quick google search and i found an article on the guardian which is called Adam Dement, the superstar spy novelist who vanished for four decades. Um, oh, this is also what the book originally looked like, uh, like the British release. Yeah, here it says, in 1971, he mysteriously dropped out of sight. Oh, for an author who had courted publicity like he did, his disappearance was a mystery suited to one of his own novels. In 1975, The Observer published an article under the headline, Whatever Happened to Adam Dement? But there were no answers, only rumors. He was living in Zurich, according to one story, editing textbooks on psychology. An American backpacker reported spending time with him in a guest house in Nepal where the author would smoke local weed and bash out stories on a portable typewriter. Others told a rather more prosaic story placing him hiding in plain sight in Kent. This is what he looked like. He was quite the dandy actually. Ah uh, see it has a story with the letters. So in 2008 the National Archive released two letters from 1969 addressed to the Bank of England and referencing an F.A. Dement 
The man's first name is Frederick, fueling a flurry of stories around currency swindling and European drug deals. That's what I read somewhere else too. But still there was nothing definite. Was there some explanation hidden in the letters as to why the man went underground? Or was he like Jason King using novel writing as a front while he worked as a spy himself? That's such a good story. Yeah, he was basically never heard of. He did four books when he was still quite young. He was forgotten as for the very occasional where are they now feature. But with this story there's a crucial difference. Adam the man is back. This took quite the turn. Well, <laughs> hi. My son's back too. I also need to tell you this morning was the first time my son said an actual word and I cannot, I still cannot believe it. So he's been saying ma 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 to me and like ba 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 to his dad. And so this morning he just looks at him and he says papa, which is like German for dad. So yeah, it was the first time. And then he left for work. So I'm excited if he comes back if he will say it again because he really clearly said that and he looked at him. So I'm sure he meant it. Okay, so apparently someone contacted him to republish his books. Unbounced Charlie Mounter remains suitably mysterious about how she contacted Dement, who is now in his early 70s. He just didn't like the fame and got bored with being well known. It's no secret that he spent half his time traveling and half at home in Kent. He might be living under a different name though. I can't reveal how I contacted him. I can't reveal how I managed to persuade Adam to let me publish his novels, but I'm very glad he has. Who knows, maybe Adam will enjoy his renaissance so much that he'll indulge us with more of the good stuff. That would be so interesting. When was this article published? <laughs> okay, for a split second, I got really excited, but this article was published in 2017. So that was seven years ago and nothing really has come off of it yet, so I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive. This is honestly just the way that my brain works. This is also how all these like uh, explain 60s fashion videos come to be. I'm just, I get really focused on things and I want to know everything. So now I think I know everything there is to know about this man. Just a recommendation if you're looking for a good 60s book. In German it's called Püppchen Püppchen. In English, it is called the Dolly Dolly Spy. Just a little heads up if you haven't heard, IKEA is currently bringing back a lot of their 60s and 70s design. For example, this. Um, they brought this back. We got there. We bought it. I love it. I also have this as a fabric now. I think it is wonderful. And it is apparently, I think it's from 1971. Anyway, I came here to decide what I'm going to wear today. Hi. I'm still doing the wearing everything that I own series, I decided to end it on day 150 because I'm running out of pieces and it's just getting way too complicated with the weather and then there's this one piece I haven't worn but the weather is just not working and I don't want to wear kind of like do the same formula of styling something over and over again so I'm just gonna say goodbye to it. There will be, I have some really fun fashion content things planned. Hi! I cleaned here the other day and it still has the paper towels. So now my son's ripping them apart, but that's fine. And, but yeah, let's see what I can wear today. I'm still in desperate need of a closet clean out. I'll do it eventually though. Let's see. I cannot open this door because it's where the baby's sitting, but I think I'll be fine. One of the pieces I don't think I've ever showed you that I will not wear today, but they're so special is this dress. So my great aunt had a boutique she still has it she's in her 80s still running the boutique and she when i last visited she was like i once had this dress in store and i never sold it because it was so beautiful but i'm not gonna wear it doesn't fit me so would you like to have it so she gave me this which is like the most 80s kind of prom dress it is beautiful it's not quite my cup of tea i was thinking about styling it in like a 50s way it's beautiful though, honestly. Maybe one day I'll wear it. It's it's honestly a very beautiful dress. It has like a drop waist, these wonderful sleeves. I'm not gonna wear this today, but I just wanted to show it to you because it is so special. Also, my son is wearing a lot of overalls lately, denim ones for today. I really like that look on him. Oh, I have worn this, 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 this. I have worn this, I've worn this. Um, oh, this one? This is a good one. 
I haven't worn this yet and I really love it. I pinned it up so it has like a lot of volume at the bottom. But, but because it is rather tight, I don't think you're able yeah. to tell. I might want to pin this in place. I thrifted this while pregnant and loved it because it like had some stretch to it and it was kind of longer. I said this is like it shortened so my stomach and everything was covered. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wear this. I love this. It's honestly such a pretty little dress. And then maybe some white tights. I would love for this to have a touch of these, like, of this light pink, but I know I don't have shoes or tights in that color. At least I don't think so. So let's see. I have these socks, which I think would be kind of cute. They're like knee high. Maybe these would work, and then some white shoes. Oh, and I have the perfect earrings. These are so perfect. Love is strong, it will keep us warm throughout the storm that's coming on. I will wait, I will wait, I will wait with you. I just got dressed. I love this dress. I feel like the lighting was really weird on the stairs, so this is a better, a better look. <sighs> Honestly, I love this dress so much. It reminds me so much. I don't know if anyone's seen this movie, Licorice Pizza. It must have come out in like 2022, 2021, something like that. It was a great film though. I really, really enjoyed it. And she wore a dress really similar to this one. Um, she being the younger sister of the Haim, Haim kind of uh, band, I think her name is Alana, I don't know, she looked amazing though, so I really really love this dress. Um, I'm about to grab some kombucha and then I'm going to show you all of the vintage finds and everything I got gifted in the last couple of weeks. So this is where the kombucha was originally in, we bought a scooby and then kind of like, you, you basically mix a bunch of black tea with a bunch of sugar and then that's it, you let it stay for quite a while. But this pot has a water seal which really much helps with the fermentation of what's going on inside there. However, yesterday we took it all out and now we have a couple of liters, I think about four liters of kombucha in total. It was really great yesterday and I'm gonna try some more. Not even try, I'm just gonna have some more today. I already had some earlier today and yesterday. I as someone who loves coffee and yerba mate, I pretty much love all caffeinated drinks and this is really great for me. Hanging on through the winter that is here, my dear, it's coming on. It has come. Okay, I came up here where there's a little more space for me to show you all the things. First of all, one question that I get a lot is whether my son is dressing like fully 60s. No, he's not. Obviously, the pieces that I buy for him are very much a 60s style because that's just what I like but we also get a lot from friends and family we got a lot of hand-me-downs so I will not not put something on him just because it's not 60s however these pieces that I now got are all original like pieces from the 60s besides one that is special in another way so let's start this <laughs> I just want to say, on Vinted, most children's clothes are very inexpensive. I think this shirt was maybe like 2 euros. Mostly the shipping is more expensive than like the piece that you're actually buying. But I love this shirt so much. Look at it. I think it's still a little big. He might be growing into this for like another summer. But it's the sweetest thing. Also the rambling noise you can hear in the back. That's him playing downstairs with my partner. So there, downstairs. Just if you're wondering for the noise, he just came back from work. Um, yeah, I really love this shirt. Honestly, I think it is so, so insanely cute. I cannot wait for him to wear this. Um, yeah, this is like a dream piece for me, for him. Next up, I got him this little pullover that I'm a little concerned might already be too small. I mean, I just feel like this <laughs> might not fit his hat, but I can open it up and maybe like leave a button open. It's so sweet. It's almost like a little dress, but like a pullover, if that makes any sense. I love this little detail down here and just overall, this is such a sweet piece. Um, yeah, the only issue is this is polyester, usually with children's clothing. 
I'm always checking that it is mostly cotton. As said, this isn't, I'm fine with it. It is sweet, it is beautiful, and I will layer cotton underneath it whenever he wears this. So this next thing is in 60s, but let me just tell you, it could be a 60s piece. It's a very timeless piece that has been worn where we live for definitely longer than the 60s, probably like the last 100 years or so, maybe even longer. And to be fully honest, I would wear this too. So this all started when my partner was like, oh, as a child, I had this pair of lederhosen, which is like leather shorts, and I loved them. And then we looked on Vinted and I found these and I fell in love with it. I just want to say my dad, who was a kid in the 60s, he also had them. So this is like a very common thing for young boys in Germany. This. Isn't it so cute? I put it on him yesterday because we got it. This is his size <laughs> for like one to one and a half years. It's it's big, but we'll see what we can do with it. First of all, I was thinking that he could wear this to the wedding, but I wanted it to be really short and it kind of goes all the way down to his knees. So I have to see about that. But isn't this the sweetest little pant? Oh, I love it so much. This was 15 bucks and the woman said it was only worn once, which I find like, it's in insane condition, and these, if you get them new, are definitely more around like a hundred bucks. So, I'm so glad about this. And then I have one more thing that we actually got handed down from the family that I believe is most likely also from the 60s. So, if you remember from my nursery tour, a lot of these furniture pieces were from my boyfriend's mom when she was a baby. She's born in 1970, so we had all these amazing pieces. This is older I'm pretty sure and it's kind of like a hand-me-down from someone in the family I got it from Golo's cousins but this is like handed down to them through several generations it's a little cherry cloth a romper with a strawberry honestly this is the cutest thing I've ever seen I cannot wait for him to wear it it's going to be his perfect size this summer it's so cute the little shorts it's honestly the perfect thing I love to put him in these like one bit one piece things just because it's so much com more comfortable for him so yeah i'm truly happy and grateful for this family and that we got this handed down and it is still in great condition which honestly just goes to show that if you take care of your clothes properly you're good for a long time i'm just turning it inside out to see if there's a tag which there isn't but if you look at this at least the strawberry is hand sewn on but honestly, I love terry cloth. I think it's the best material. It's so comfortable and it was just so popular in the 60s. And I have a pair of shorts that is terry cloth, a red and white stripe. So we could be twining with this. Okay, moving on to a bunch of things that I got sent over the course of the last couple of weeks. I got sent three clothing pieces, a bunch of makeup from three different companies in total. So I would like to start with Day Tripper. I think I talked about them on here before. I'm pretty sure they sent me the most amazing jumpsuit. If I didn't talk about them in like a full YouTube video, I definitely showed you the pieces in a vlog. And if you don't want to miss out on like my day-to-day -day things where I also will talk about all the packages that I get and everything, make sure to follow me on Instagram. It's just where I take you through my day pretty much every day. So yeah, she came out with a new collection and she sent me some pieces. The first one is this wonderful dress. I already have this print as a jumpsuit and I love it so much. It's all hand sewn, handmade in Australia, which I find is really interesting. This is what the tags look like. I love this dress. I'm gonna put up a bit of me wearing it. It's perfect, honestly. It is so cute, so wonderful. Such an amazing piece. I love to style it with like yellow tights. I'm honestly over the moon with this piece. I really, really, truly love it. You know that I have a big heart for jumpsuits, overall, all these sorts of things. And she gave me this, which is her jumpsuit, the short one. I said I also have the long ones from her. I love it. The fit on everything is so perfect. It has a elastic in the back. She's very size inclusive. You can get them pretty much in all sizes. I also have a 10% code for you. I'm gonna put that here in case you wanna shop and the link is down below in the description. It's wonderful, honestly. It comes with a tie belt. I've also worn this as a scarf, head scarf, and then just added the belt. It's perfect. I love, love, love the pattern, and it's just so comfortable. Everything is kind of like a thicker fabric, but like it's still stretchy, which just makes it really, really nice and comfortable to be worn. 
The next piece I got is also from Australia. Honestly, they seem to have a great scene for slow fashion, sustainable fashion, 60s inspired fashion over there. The next piece that I got is by Mellow Mellow. This is the tag and if you see this is a size 10 Australian, the other things were size 12. I don't want you to comp compare sizes, I just want to say I always go off the sizing chart. So I will go with whatever that says. So that's why I have clothing in pretty much every single size because I feel like clothing just kind of runs different depending on where you buy it. So yeah, I got this dress. I'm gonna put up a video of me wearing it. It's the most amazing thing. Look at the corduroy, the patterns, the buttons. I just so deeply, honestly love this dress. I think it is one of the most beautiful dresses I own, to be quite fair. It's just the perfect little piece. Reminds me a lot of the dress that Patty Boyd wore when they visited Hyde Asbury because she kind of wore it with a vest that was kind of like a leather vest. And I feel like with this top, the corduroy kind of looking like suede, this works really well. And I honestly truly love it. Such a beautiful piece. So I'm gonna link them down below as well. If you wanna shop there, it's always great to shop at sustainable brands. And these are two brands I can wholeheartedly introduce to you and encourage you to buy from. There are two amazing women behind these brands running them all by themselves and it's just honestly inspiring to me and it means a lot that they are willing to work with me and give me these pieces and I just want to get the word out about how amazing they are. So the next brand sent me a bunch of makeup and I just want to say this is like my dream collab. It is a brand I've talked on here in so many videos, it's a brand that was widely popular in the 1960s. One of the few that is still around to this day and that still stays kind of strong to their original sort of style and branding and that is Mary Quant. Mary Quant, I never know how to say it. I think it's Mary Quant. I'm unsure though. So um, they sent me a bunch of makeup. They were basically reaching out asking me to pick a few things But they also added a few things that I didn't choose So I'm excited. I only peeked into it because I wanted to open it with you So I'm just gonna show you in a second. We can be excited about it together So this is the bag that was in the parcel. I bet it wasn't open on two sides before but uh, German Toll opened it, as you can see by the nice green tape they then put. Here we go. So I don't think I chose this one. It's a little lip chat. I really like the color. That's a cool color. I, I need to try all of these and like do makeup. By applying multiple layers, even with just one color, you can create and enjoy a wide range of different lip looks. Oh, I love that. The packaging is so cute. See, that's what I mean. They still go by like the same font, the same kind of branding, which I think is amazing. Let me open it with you. I'm so excited. I said this is a dream collab for me. Oh, it smells really nice. Comes up like this. I'm already wearing lipstick. Oh, I like this color a lot. Damn, I should have brought like a cloth or something up here. Um, this is the color. This feels really old YouTube. This is the kind of YouTube tutorials I watched growing up. Oh, but I really love it. This would be great for like a Stevie Nicks look. That kind of color is very good for her kind of looks, honestly. Okay, I quickly ran down. Got my son's wet wipes. <laughs> we only use them for on the go, so it took me a minute to find them. But here we are. I hope they're good at... Oh yeah, this comes off really nicely. I think this is a great product, honestly. Without like having tried it in depth, I'm excited to be wearing this. Oh, this is so sweet. This is kind of like a timeline of their designs and like important bits um, throughout their career. She opened her first boutique. She does add the mini skirt. They started making cosmetics in 1966. That's crazy to me. It's overall insane to me that this brand has been around since 1955. That's such a long time. Next up is this. These are their blush baby blushes. They asked me to choose a couple of these. They actually have a great website where they kind of like detail everything. Oh, I like this. I honestly think that this color is kind of similar to what I'm wearing today, yeah. But what I'm wearing today is actually like a, a tint. So this is kind of cool to change things up, honestly. 
I really like this color. I chose this one, I believe. They let me choose like different things. Um, then I have like a lighter pink. This one's also really cool though. Oh, what's in here? See how nice the packaging is? It says compact mirror in the back. Their designs are so amazing. Look at it. It's like the signature black little flower. It even like has this kind of function where it stands up by itself. I feel like this is perfect to travel or even like touch up your makeup on the go. And everything, I just have to say, feels very high quality. Like I usually only buy drugstore makeup, so I'm not quite the person to judge here. But this feels so nice and high quality. Next up is, it's a lengthening mascara. Oh, I'm, I'm intrigued. And it says, Coco Brown. Is it a brown one? I've been wanting brown mascara for quite a while. I actually almost I actually almost bought this a couple of weeks ago. And then I didn't. So maybe this was like a sign. The design. Honestly, I'm so blown away. This is such a cool color. I really like the makeup brushes with like the mascara brushes with the small bristles. For me, they work the best. So I'm excited to try this. I should have done this and then do my makeup with this that would have kind of been cool but i forgot to do that so there might be a different like separate video where i try all of these and like do a full face of makeup it's wonderful honestly it's like a brush on this side and then like a little smudgy tip on this side i feel like honestly i'm in love with how everything has a flower detail i feel like a lot of these things will be great for traveling and just using on the go and i feel like that's where they're gonna end up and my little like makeup thingy where i just bring everything that i use to freshen up throughout the day next up this is daisy doll by mary quant an eye color palette the little colors i love the shimmery colors this is all so insanely perfect honestly i feel like i'm just saying like the same thing over and over again but i'm generally so excited about this honestly all these pieces it, it means a lot i feel like when you've been looking up to a brand for so many years you love them so dearly and then they reach out to work with you that's just a big honor so next up i have this lipstick it says every girl has a favorite color i have 36 i believe there are 36 shades in their lipstick oh, the tip has the wonderful little flower these are packaged so nicely <laughs> this is such a cool color it's like a hot pink kind of color i honestly thought that this one was perfect for some 60s looks if you've been following me for a while you know that i didn't really wear any lipstick for the longest time but lately i've been truly loving it maybe continue with this one this is their eyeshadow. They put four of their eyeshadows in here. That's so, so wonderful. They're called Eye Opener, which I think is really cool. Okay, let's see. The first color, it's like the classic 1960s shade of pale blue. I'm wondering whether they like did the same shade and sort of formula and product since the 60s. Because this is beautiful. Now I need one of these. My friend Sam was recently over and she had a palette where you can like with like a magnet back and you can just put everything in. I'm thinking if I need something like this because all of these need to go somewhere. Maybe I'll ask her about the brand. A classic white. It's what I pretty much wear every single day. I love white eyeshadow. I run through those like crazy, so that's great. I got some yellow and then I also got some orange. These are great colors. I honestly... I really like these kind of warmer tones with my green eyes. I also really like a green, but I already have like five green eyeshadows and the mini palette also features a green eyeshadow. So I feel like this is a good compilation of different kind of shades and colors. There are even more things, I cannot believe it. A little sticker, another little brush. This is kind of like what it looks like. I think this one is honestly great. It has the spongy end on one side and then this plastic on the other side. I'm excited to try this. I haven't tried one of the plastic ones before. Then there's this, which is called Cheeky Baby. The packaging with the black and white. It's such a mod kind of classic packaging. I'm just so excited, honestly. This might have gotten hot on its way. I need to see. I think I can still use it. It's just like cracked a little bit. But this is like a mousse. 
Oh yeah, no, I think you can still, oh, I love it. It's like a highlighter actually, almost. Look at this. Can you see that? It's very dark out, it's like a rainy day, so there's no sun to reflect it. But let me tell you, it reflects quite nicely. I think this is like a darker or like a more classic red, if I remember it correctly. The design is so dreamy. Yes, this is kind of like a classic red, which I also really enjoy to do, which, how cute is this paper? I need to repurpose it. I'm gonna make something out of this, honestly. But the last thing is Mary Crown Essential Hand Cream. Perfumed with special recipe, luxuriously fragrance hand cream that leaves your hands hydrated and smooth. That doesn't sound bad. Let's open it. It smells so good. It smells like... It kind of smells like my grandma's bathroom. <laughs> like a very... I, I love those kind of smells. It's like a very clean smell. And I truly love it when things smell clean. It's like something that I really love. I also love all sort of like musky smells, flowery. I'm pretty much on board with everything as long as it isn't too sweet. That's a great smell and it feels nice. It kind of like sinks into your skin quite quickly, which I love. So yeah, that's my little haul. That's basically all I got for you today, as far as like the haul goes. Um, we are going to leave now for the grocery store and then I really don't know what we're gonna do afterwards, honestly. I'll catch you up then. Okay, we are back home. It's a little later. It's almost dark out, basically. Um, I just came here with all of my planners, everything, because I'm the kind of person, I'm very visual with my planning and things. So I just want to write out what I have to do this week, because there's so much coming up. Uh, this is the book that I only solely use for wedding related things. We, just to kind of like give you a little update, we are doing pretty well. We're pretty far with the planning, um, but I need to call the courthouse to just get a few little things, but they're already closed, so I need to do that tomorrow. Um, other than that, this seems good. This is just what I use to journal and write poetry in. I actually, I think I made a video showing you all of my planners. This is my calendar for this year. I fell in love with the little dog. I would love to go thrifting this week, just because we still need some things for the wedding. We still need a lot of decor, and one thing that I came to terms with that I really want to do is I want to have, like, for the dinner, the caterers are going to bring the plates, but for the cake, we're kind of like doing it ourselves. Like everyone's basically, not everyone, but like a bunch of people are bringing a cake, which I think is amazing because it's going to make for that little like cake buffet that is made with so much love from all these people attending. And we kind of like looked into renting plates and everything, but all the plates that we found were not beautiful. So my idea was to go thrifting sometime later this week. And like buy, we have around 50 guests, buy 50 dreamy vintage plates. Wouldn't that be amazing? And I know two thrift stores where they have so many vintage plates and where I'm sure I'll find 50 and they're like usually 10 cents per piece. So that would truly be amazing. And then the only other thing I need to take care of are name cards for like the table. Yeah, that's kind of like an update on the wedding planning and how it is going. So on Sunday, my best friend and I we were kind of like talking and she goes, well, I'd love to do a bachelorette for you. Who'd you like to invite? What would you like to do? And it kind of really caught me off guard to say the least. I was very excited. It's just that I didn't expect it, I guess. <laughs> um, so like bachelorette and like wedding scales in general aren't as big in Germany. Like usually, obviously you can do whatever you want, but like a lot of the things aren't as big here as they are in the US. Like for example, my friend Sam, she was just over, she's from America. She's gonna come to our wedding and she was like, well, what about the bridal party? And I was like, yeah, that's not quite the thing here, honestly. I just didn't like plan a bachelor for myself. But I said, my best friend, she reached out and she was kind of like, yeah, who'd you like to take? What would you like to do? And I was like, I have no clue. So she was like, well, what if I just plan something and you just tell me who'd you like to be there? And it honestly took me two days, two nights of sleep to realize I would much rather just be there with her and I. Don't get me wrong, I have a bunch of amazing friends, but I just 
don't quite have a friend group. Like I have a friend here, I have a friend there. I love them all dearly. A lot of them are not even in the country, a lot of them are quite far away, and a lot of them don't really know each other. So I thought that honestly the nicest thing to approach this was for just her and I to do something. And at first it felt weird because I feel like not only social media but like the society in general has brought up this huge pressure when it comes to weddings and people being like, well you need to have everyone there. You need to make it really big, you need to do this and that just all to make it very special. I used to have an issue with not really having a friend group. When I was still in school I had a pretty big friend group but it kind of like dissolved over time. Everyone took their own ways. I'm still friends with some people from school and I dearly love all of them. But I honestly, I'm okay with not having a big bachelorette party. I. I'm excited about the thought that it's going to be her and I, that we are going to spend this special time together. And honestly, I just, there is no other motive in me telling you that than just the fact you don't need a lot of friends to live your life. It is fine. You don't need a big friend group. It's okay to have a friend here and there. It's okay to not do things the way that other people do it. So it's okay to have a bachelorette party with only one person there, honestly. Do whatever you want. Do whatever makes you feel great and whatever makes you happy. I truly believe that that's like the way to go in life if you want to be happy. So on that note, I'm just going to end the video right here. I want to thank you for watching it. I want to thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend. It supports me, it supports the channel, and it would truly mean the world. I hope you have a beautiful day. Go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today and I will catch you in the next video. Bye everybody!